<laughs> All right. Good morning and welcome to uh, this wonderful, wonderful um, uh, Zoom that we've planned for you today. Um, I'm very excited uh, that Lori has agreed to do this in spite of having a very hectic schedule and just getting through a major kitchen remodel. She's here live in person, at least virtually. Um, Hello. For, those, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, we are recording this session and um, we've got a whole big expansive redo of some branding going on and it's going to be easier for you to find our Zoomies, et cetera. So just stay tuned, but we are recording this. And so you're being on the Zoomy. Um, if you don't want your picture shown, just, you know, blank out your video portion. Um, and um, I just want to tell you a little bit about Lori in case those of you who haven't had an opportunity to meet this incredible woman. Um, Lori's lived with a total of 10 Scotties so far, as she said. Although she's not a professional groomer, she certainly has enough of those grooms under her belt. Um, she was a college teacher and editor by profession, and she's attended numerous Scotty grooming seminars and has groomed all 10 of her Scotties for over a period of 43 years. I wonder what that would tally up to be, Lori. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of new blades. <laughs> exactly. Um, we're, we're very proud to share also that Lori is a Door County Scotty Rally board member and along with her husband, Jim. Um, the, the recipient of the 2021 um, Door County Scotty Rally's Braveheart Award. She and Jim uh, live in Chicago, Illinois, right in the heart of the city. And um, they live there with their wonderful Scotty Nessa, who you'll be seeing, um, I think, in a few slides. So, Lori, take it away for us and thank you. Well, thank you everyone for attending. It's early on a, for me anyhow on a Saturday, being retired, I, I like to sleep in. It's early on a Saturday morning, but I'm delighted to see as many people here as we have now and usually more people join us as we go along. Um, welcome and thank you, Michelle, for the introduction. I'm changing the slide to the Zoomies protocols and questions. Um, if you haven't already, please mute yourself and keep yourself muted until the presenter or the or the moderator asks you. Well, actually, um, Michelle is our moderator, ask you to unmute. Um, the presentation will last about 45 minutes and will be followed by a 15 minute question and answer session. Uh, questions may be typed into the chat during the presentation. And I, whenever I watch one of these, I like to type in during the presentation. It won't interrupt things unless people choose to up the question chat thing for themselves. Uh, you won't see those unless you click on it. Um, so during the presentation, as you're thinking of questions, it's, it's, fine to type them into the chat session and then during the obviously during the Q&A session and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. Um, this is the title, Help for Your Scotty's Bad Hair Days, uh, Fix Grooming Gaffes Yourself or by Working with Your Groomer and mostly we're talking about fixing them yourself but I'll talk about how to talk to your groomer. Yes, that is a Scotty. That was um, our Nessa when she first came in to rescue. And the lovely young woman who had her after um, her relative died and she took her in and wanted badly to keep her, had her professionally groomed before she brought her over. And this was the way that Nessa looked. Um, you can't see the Westie head from the side as well, but you sure can see that tail flag. So um, you'll be seeing more of Nessa as we go along, and she does, in fact, look like a Scotty now. I started grooming my own Scotties, I think it was 42, not 43 years ago, but I'm losing count at this point. Um, this is my first Scotty, Hannah, as a pup. And you can see she's been by her nose that she's been digging in the mud. Um, she was professionally groomed once. Um, I told them when I, I let go of her, 
please make, I asked if they had a yard. They said they did, a uh, fenced in yard to let her out. I said, please make sure she gets to go out. They were keeping her all day. When I went to pick her up, Hannah, who was very fussy about where she eliminated, the minute we got out the door, she squatted and urinated on the sidewalk and right outside of the place. I knew they hadn't let her out all day. So I decided at that point, I was not going to subject my dog to grooming. I'm sure there are plenty of groomers who are just fine, but that was my unfortunate experience. So I had a friend who had a friend who was, the friend of the friend was a Russian groomer. And she said, he's coming over to um, groom my Irish setters and you can bring Hannah over and watch him. He knows how to groom Scotties too. Well, this was late at night. By the time we got around to grooming Hannah, it was, oh, maybe 12 o'clock midnight or one o'clock. I don't remember which. And there had been some vodka um, involved in this little groom set fest. And Hannah looked great at the end, except that she ended up with only one eyebrow. <laughs> and he said to me, it will grow back. Um, on that shaky basis, I began buying grooming equipment and grooming my own Scotties. These are the reasons I can think of why you should groom your own Scotty to whatever extent. Um, you can, in fact, get the exact look you want for each Scotty if you do the whole thing yourself. Well, you know, unless you're having a bad day. That happens with me sometimes. You will eventually save money. Um, there is a cash outlay, as we'll talk about in uh, the next slide. But more importantly, I think you become familiar with your Scotty's body. You notice problems early, like lumps, ticks, skin problems, mats. You notice tender areas, things like that. You become really knowledgeable about their body. And really important is you develop a sounder relationship with your Scotty. You learn to see what your Scotty is telling you and you learn to listen to that. Because frankly, if you don't listen to it, you have an uncooperative Scotty who won't let you go forward. Here are the cons of grooming at home. You are the one who actually has to do it. You can't just daily send your Scotty off and they will come back to you all spiffy, hopefully. You can, in fact, make mistakes, but most of them are not serious. It would grow back, as my Russian friends, friend of a friend said. It is possible to hurt your Scotty, to nip into the, an ear, to nip into one of the moles, and we'll talk about the moles. Um, but I'll be giving you some good tips have, on how to avoid um, doing any harm. In my 42 years, I think I nipped an ear once, um, but, um, I'm sure it could happen more than that if you're really in a hurry. Um, and we'll talk about that too. There is an initial, initial cash investment. What we're talking about today is a smaller investment because you are still working with a professional groomer and you're just trying to fine tune the grooming job. But there can be um, a, 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 a considerable cash outlay at some point. There is a learning curve. You'll get better as you go along, um, but there you will make mistakes, but they will grow back. And you do need to do the cleanup. Um, as you can see here, here's Hemingway and he has some hair around him. This is about halfway through or three quarters of the way through um, his grooming. So there, is, uh, there are those things that you have to take into consideration. Are you willing actually to do it yourself? And sometimes it's like, you know, the, the cobbler's children have no shoes. Sometimes my dogs look scruffier because life happens and I can't get around to it. I wanna make this part perfectly clear. You can do whatever you want in terms of grooming your Scotty. It's your Scotty. 
You get to groom them however you want to please your own aesthetic sense. Um, you find the look that you like and you try to reproduce it or get your groomer to reproduce it. And yes, there is a proper way to groom a Scotty and we'll aim toward that, but you do you. You get to decide, this is your dog. You do need to be realistic. Each Scotty is different and an identical grooming job will not look the same on different Scots. Working with your Scotty on grooming does though deepen your relationship as I mentioned and you learn a lot about yourself. Sometimes it's kind of ugly. The professional Scotty look, the basics of that. They're cinder blocks, right? Go blocky or go home. The best grooming advice I ever received came from a very well-known Scotty breeder who still is with us. And it was at a live uh, grooming seminar. Um, uh, she said, Scotties are blocky. They're basically blocks. Nothing should stick out to the sides. And you need to look at the Scotty from all angles, from their sides, like this Scotty is oriented, um, from the top down. And when you're looking down, you shouldn't see anything sticking out. Um, from the back end, you shouldn't see things from the front of the dog. You shouldn't see stuff flying out the sides. Nothing should stick out from to the side from any angle. These are all my dogs, not every one of them, but a good sampling of them. And I'll just quickly go over some peculiarities of their coat and body. You know, they not all Scotties look exactly alike. When you go into the show ring, you get more Scotties looking the same, but that's a whole nother story. But there is a good reason why one size fit, fits all grooming does not work for every Scotty coat or body type. They are individuals physically. This is, you will see more of him. This is um, Toby and no Duncan, sorry. And Duncan came from an abusive uh, neglect situation. And he, you can't see it here because most of it has grown out, but he had elephant skin. He has damage inside his ears as does little Maddie here so that the ears are black and shiny inside. Um, his coat was never full um, and that was because of his history. Maddie also came off the streets of Chicago and so she had sun damage. She also had a very thin and very straight coat. This is Sadie. Girl had coat to spare. She really did. She, she had one of the most beautiful coats I've had in dogs. This is Toby, also from a neglect and abuse situation. And he had a great coat. He had tipped ears. Um, this is Hemingway. Look at how long the neck is. That is in fashion now these days. But his neck is a lot longer than you see. And you can see it here too. That's him. This is him with Nessa. Nessa has great coat. Um, I never had a bad day in her life. Uh, Maddie, you can see here, Maddie has, uh, Maddie's coat went from good, this is a, a good period, this is a, a less good period where she had bare spots. And this is Emma um, who, she had a good enough coat for most of her life, but when she got older and got atypical Cushing's, the coat fell. And that's another thing we'll talk about, change over time. These are some of, this is Duncan, and you can see the skin damage. He has elephant skin, and if this was all, his entire undercarriage and his legs at the beginning, this was like a year in. At the beginning, he had no hair um, below the midline. Um, right in, in, let's see, let me get the laser up, right along, you can see this stuff here, and he had no hair all along this line. Um, so differences you'll need to adapt your grooming for, coat thickness and 
quality. Every Scotty has a different kind of coat um, unless they've been bred to have beautiful coats. Um, so that's uh, something you'll need to take into consideration. Some Scotties have very curly coats. And I found um, when uh, I had Scotties with hypothyroidism, their coat was curlier. Some have stark straight coats, more like a cairn. Um, and then like Duncan, damage from neglect or abuse. And you'll have to adapt also for the physical size and sh shape of the body parts. How long are the ears, the tail, the torso, the ears, oop, I put ears twice, muzzle, legs, all of these things need to be taken into consideration as you're grooming your Scotty and, and trying to adapt to get the look you want. Um, there are ways to disguise certain things and we'll talk only about ears in that regard. Also their age, as I said, the coat chain can change over time. Their health, if they get something like Cushing's or hypothyroidism and their grooming history. If you have a Scotty who is constantly clippered, their coat will change. It will get less hard, it will get much softer and it can um, over time get thinner. So all of these can affect the change or change the coat quality. This is my, um, the, if you, what we're going to talk about is this fix up kind of um, grooming. These are the um, tools that I suggest you use. And this one is optional. First of all, and most importantly, you need a brush and a comb. A brush is an individual, um, uh, decision, and it should be your Scotty's individual decision. Um, what does the Scotty cooperate with? I like a porcupine brush. It's got bristles and then um, a plastic thing with a little knob on the end. This kind of this particular brand of brush is no longer in production, but there are others. I like to test a brush on my arm and if it hurts my arm, I don't buy it. Um, a comb, I like one with rotating teeth like this one is. This, I don't think this brand is, my tools are old. I don't think this brand is still in production, but there's, I checked, there still are combs out there with rotating teeth. What the rotating teeth do is they allow you to get through um, more easily, get through a coat that's a little tangled. It won't go through a mat. But um, if you do what I'm going to suggest, you won't be getting as many mats or you'll find them sooner. You're going to need to have straight scissors. I say at least $50, but the, in up to like 100, 125, the more you pay, the better. I've never spent more than 125, but I've spent plenty on, on scissors, straight scissors. And that's this one right here. Um, oh, sorry, I don't have my laser on again. Put it on. It's this one, obviously. We're going top to bottom, left to right. This is. These are the thinning shears, and the sh thinning shears can also cost the same amount of money. Um, this, these, I think, cost about eighty dollars, um, and they're different um, in the spacing of the teeth, and you'll have to. You can look this up online, how to find, uh, decide on um, the correct scissors or shears. And the wider the space between the teeth, um, the, le the less hair you're actually removing. And we'll talk about the use for these. These are small ear scissors with a blunt nose. It's nice to have um, this because when you're working around eyes or ears, insides of ears, it's if the Scotty moves at all, um, you can poke them. And if it's there, and the the thinning shears also have a rounded tip. Um, you can even get these with rounded tips, um, but I choose to use them in places where I'm not likely to poke a dog. And I like the pointed tip because it go the. These shears are, can, are sharpened all the way to the end of the tip. 
This next one is called the Andis de-shedding tool. It costs $25. And I learned about this um, at one of our Zoomy presentations. I'd never heard of it. It's an amazingly wonderful tool. And um, we'll talk about, I mostly use it on the jacket, but I use it also to thin out places um, elsewhere. And supposedly it does not cut the coat, it pulls the coat. You'd think that would hurt, but Scotty's seem to love it. Um, and it that will help keep the coat harder. Um, those are the essential tools. This one is optional. I'm sorry that it's so old that the, the name peanut has uh, rubbed off of it. This is the wall peanut trimmer. I use the wall peanut trimmer on the feet, bottom of the feet of Scotty's who will allow it. Some there's, I had, I think it was Hemingway um, who died a year ago. Um, the minute I turned the thing on, he, he would not, he didn't want it anywhere near him. And, you know, you do you, Hemingway. I'm not going to force you to have the thing on. Um, you quite might be questioning, don't I need a table? No. In a word, no. You don't need a table. Doing the kinds of grooming you're going to be grooming, we're going to be talking about here. Um, I've been known to quick groom Scotty parts while sitting on my bed or on my couch. I used to be able to do it on the floor, which was in some ways easier. You're not doing full grooming job. You can put down a towel and catch hair clippings or use a sticky tape roller to clear off, uh, clean off it, the area from hair afterwards. It doesn't really have to be a big deal. Um, you're not, again, you're not taking off a lot of hair. If you have a lot of hair um, that you're taking off, if you decide to go into advanced grooming and buy a clipper and or do a lot of stripping, you're going to need to have a table simply because it's easier to work standing and move the dog around. Um, I have a table. I do not use this the grooming arm. I do not use the noose. And I know there are people who will scream and yell about this, but I feel if you can encourage your Scott to cooperate with you, forcing cooperation with um, a noose is not the solution. You need to find a, a way to get them to cooperate. And there are, they will cooperate, and we're going to talk about that. This was taken last night at about this picture, is NASA being uh, having her her um, undercarriage rubbed and you'll notice she's lying flat on her back and she's seemingly in bliss. I, she falls asleep sometimes when I'm doing this. The first time one of my Scotty friends told me she brushed her dogs every day, I gasped. Really? <laughs> you brush your dogs every day? And she had two at the time. I think I had three at the time. Um, it took me a couple of years to establish a daily coat brushing. And I'm here to tell you, it works wonder. Daily brushing keeps the coat cleaner. I, I can't even remember the last time Nessa had a bath. Uh, maybe it was two and a half, three months ago. Um, it keeps the skin healthier. You're massaging the skin. It catches mats before they're um, monsters. You can, uh, every time I brush Nesta, I feel in the um, armpits, um, feel other places where she tends to get mats. And um, I can catch a mat when it's, it's pretty easy to remove. Establish a set time of day for this ritual. And I suggest that because that's the only way I can get myself to remember to do it. She gets brushed normally first thing in the morning before she goes out. I brush her, I come call her up onto the bed. She knows what's going to happen. She stands with her back to me. I brush her jacket and one of her furnishings and her chest and her beard that I can reach. 
I then tap her on her left side and she knows that that means I'm going to pick her up and flip her over. Not every Scotty will let you do this. And Nessa would not allow me to do this if another Scotty was in the room. I know because she wouldn't let me do it when Hemingway was alive and he was in the room. Um, but if you, if for some of them anyhow, it is possible. If you can't flip them over, you can um, reach under with the brush and, and just gently brush them. You need to take it slow if your Scotty is resisting and not used to being brushed. Um, you might want to consider changing the brush type if the resistance persists. It may just be the brush. Um, I personally do not like, I know a lot of people like slicker brushes. I don't like them. Man, if you put one of those down your arm, um, it really hurts. I know they have tougher skin, but ugh. and so I had my first, I think my first or second Scotty really liked the slicker brush, so I used it. Brush in a slow, gentle manner and talk soothingly to your Scotty as you brush. Um, I can't stress this enough. It is, there's a tendency when we're trying to get something done, like brush the dog, um, at least there is for me, I'm an impatient person, um, to do it fast in, you know, like jerky movements, that's not comfortable. Slow, gentle, long strokes, telling them what a good Scotty they are, um, slowing down your voice, and we'll talk about this more, which kinds of sounds soothe your Scotty. So this is part of what you're doing here is what is called operant conditioning or not, not operant, classic, classical conditioning. Um, you're pairing something that is potentially aversive if the Scotty doesn't like bring, being brushed at first with something that is pleasant, like being told how wonderful you are, um, have, having someone talk soothingly to you. Brushing and combing in any case are an essential part of every spot grooming too. And if you haven't brushed out your Scotty, you're gonna to have to do that before you groom. And that's going to add more. You're still gonna to have to do a little brushing, but if they've been brushed that day, there's not a whole lot of preliminary brushing I do during any kind of groom session, long or short. Um, because I'd brush daily. This is also a great way to establish daily brushing, establish the expectation in your Scotty that you will be messing with their coat. You're touching them, you're moving them, that sort of thing. It's a, it's a way to say, we do this together. Ways to earn your Scotty's cooperation. I can't stress enough, five flower remedy, by um, Flower Essences Services is an amazing product. It's a um, flower essence. You want to buy the spray um, that is alcohol based, not glycerin based because the glycerin one is sticky. You're not spraying it in the mouth of your dog. You do that for yourself. You spray it on your hands and then you rub it on the Scotty's head, face, ears, chest and also spray some in your mouth. Use it liberally. It The times when I um, do Nessa's nails and she's fairly cooperative and I forget just to put a little five flower on her, she's squirmy and not as cooperative. It takes the edge off and makes things possible. Also use treats. There's no reason why you shouldn't give your dog treats when you're grooming them. Some people say, oh, well, you sh they should cooperate no matter what. <laughs> I mean, here, here you go. Do you go to your job and not get any reward for it? No, you don't, you know? You and again, this is um, classical conditioning. You're pairing something pleasant with something. And the association, you know, at, when I worked, they waved a check at me and I, I would come to work. <laughs> You know, I had friends that at my workplace, it was pleasant enough that the parts I didn't like, I was willing to put up with. Your dogs have the same wiring. So you, 
what you need to do is use treats that are special to each Scotty. If your Scotty will, will let you groom them with regular everyday treats, and some of mine did, and Nessa still does, that's fine. But you may need to ramp up the quality to something they really, really like, and then save it for grooming only so that they know uh, this is, and they will know this. This is time for me to get that kangaroo treat or whatever it is. Um, it, my, my prime example is one of my Scotties, Emma, who had to have allergy injections and she did not like getting them. I did not like giving them, but I slowly built up the expectation with her that she would get a certain kind of treat if she allowed me to do this. It got to the point where Emma, I would sit down on the floor, spread out my legs. She would come, turn her back to me, sit down in front of me. And I would give her her injection and she would get her special treat. Now, all of that didn't happen in a day, but it's amazing what a person or a dog will do if they are appropriately rewarded. You need to tailor the timing of giving treats to each individual Scotty. Um, less may be best, and Nessa's that way. Consider a distraction toy like a lick mat where you spread peanut butter on it for touchy areas. Um, that I've never tried that, but I hear some it works for some people. And I talked about sounds and praise um, a little bit before. You take advantage of sounds that are hardwired for mammals. Long, slow, drawn out vowels are soothing. And this applies across, there have been studies done this, across the animal, the mammal kingdom. Every animal, mammal makes this kind of soothing, long sound if they're trying to get an anxious animal, uh, an anxious child um, ramped down. But, but sh short, faster staccato vowels are interrupted, like eh, 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 that kind of thing. So you can, you know, if, if the, your Scotty is getting anxious or squirmy, to a certain extent, you can use this technique and just talk them down. Um, and you can also warn them away from doing things like um, uh, pulling away or something like that. You can say, ah, ah. but you're not doing this in a, an aggressive way. You're doing it just as a warning and just creating an atmosphere. And praise liberally um, if that works for your Scotty. Some Scotties really don't care. I've had them where it's like, oh, well, tell it to somebody else. I, that doesn't do anything for me. Um, my, the first dog trainer that I worked with said, had an, said you can praise something as some, uh, your dog into something. You start the praising before they're actually doing it and they come around. The cardinal number one rule is don't groom angry or when you're tired, or if you're impatient, oop, I left the eye off. Or when you're rushed, this is just not going to work. You set the tone for the grooming session. Your Scotty will read you. you. Use the five flower formula liberally for yourself if you need it. Decide ahead of time that you're going to have fun. It will grow back if you make a mistake. And consciously, you know, be aware of not only your dog, but yourself. Are your shoulders tense? Drop them. Are you breathing? When you concentrate, when we concentrate, we have a tendency to hold our breath. And that makes everything worse. Say mantras, whatever you need to do, but keep yourself calm. Um, making sessions short really works. Um, for everybody, and you definitely want to end on a positive note. Don't press an uncooperative Scott to keep going. 
you listen to your dog and you let them to some extent control what does and does not happen. And if you get tense, take a walk, take a break. This is my husband, Jim and Nessa walking in our neighborhood. We're not in the heart of Chicago. We're on the far north side, by the way. Um, a damaged relationship with your Scotty is too great a price to pay for a perfectly shaped tail or ear or eyebrow. Bottom line. The grooming gaffs we'll go over today are the hula skirt, also known as the thunder thighs, the westy head, uh, hobbit feet or mucklucks, tail flag or a rat flag, dumbo ears, and bowl cut eyebrows or misshapen eyebrows, let's say. Hula skirt is first because this is a common Scotty grooming issue. The cause of it is clipping the jacket very short and leaving a hard and often straight line parallel to the ground with a long skirt or furnishings below. So it looks like a hula skirt. It violates the rule, nothing out to the sides. This is the reverse of what, how they tell you to trim a bonsai tree or a, a Japanese maple. maple. You, you don't, if for, for Japanese maple, you don't cut anything out to, that's on the sides. You cut from the top things that are growing up. Uh, wrong direction for Scotty grooming. All you need to do if you're, you've got a Scotty with a hula skirt is add a little Don Yo Ho ukulele music, uh, flower lay, a couple of coconuts discreetly placed, and your Scotty won't just hula dance, they will flounce or appear to be a hovercraft. And you know, if you like this look, that's your biz, right? <laughs> this is not anybody's Scotty we know, right? And the reason I am not using pictures of anybody else's Scotty is because that's just me. I wouldn't do that. Things that are wrong, if they're not wrong for you, they're not wrong. So the fix for a hula skirt, and this is what you see. And in, um, in fact, I've got another Scotty here. I don't know if you can see this. This is this toy has a very straight line right across the bottom. And this is what I more often see in hula skirts, not, a, not this bendy one like you're seeing um, here in, this, in this, uh, this Scotty going along this line. So the equipment that you're gonna need are thinning shears or, and or the andest shedding tool, depending on how, um, how much you've used that, you'll learn how to use it when you start with it. What you wanna do is erase this hard line. Um, there is, you wanna remove more hair just below the line than and decrease the amount you're removing as you go down, um, as, as you move down the furnishings. You're not going to be cutting much as you go down, but you wanna take out this line. Um, what you need to do is hold the thinning shears perpendicular, not parallel to the ground. So like this. So when you're 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 taking it down the Scotty, and this is the general rule. If you want to, whether or not, the rule is generally, if you want not to make a line, you don't go across the growth direction of the hair. In this case, the hair is. Um, going down. So if you clip like this, you're going to make another line, even with a thin, thinning shears. You're going to see it depending on how much you take off. But if you go this way, you're not seeing that, that uh, line. You're taking away a line. Um, let me get this up. Continuing with the hula skirt fix, a trick that I learned from just desperation is that you can use the thumb of a non-grooming hand to gently roll up the skin on the back of the Scotty. 
Um, the reason you want to do that, and I'm going to pull this little guy out because and most of my Scotty's, Scotty toys are black and it's harder to see. So this guy is brown, even though he doesn't have much in the way of a coat. But I'm talking about taking the thumb and just pulling gently up the side of the Scotty um, so that what you're doing is you're moving the furnishing line up on the Scotty's body. So what you have underneath where you're trying to work is flesh and bones, not air. You know, you get moved down on the dog, you're, you're getting air. So you wanna roll that up so that you have a work, good working surface. surface. And this, um, it makes it much easier to work on the line. This is a Scotty, this is NASA, and she doesn't have a Sahula skirt. And this is because I use these techniques on her. It should look like, it should look like your dog hasn't been groomed is basically what it should look like. Should not, you, you shouldn't have a dog who looks like he just came out of the shop. And if you, again, if you like that, let freedom ring, go for it. The goal here though, that we're talking about is that the line between the jacket, which is the upper part of the body here and the furnishings, some people call it a skirt, but it, they're, it, it's furnishings. This, that the line is less noticeable or ideally pretty much here invisible. And the line between the jacket and the furnishings follows the body contour. And again, your Scotty has a different contour than any other Scotty does. Um, and that it is not a straight line or strictly parallel to the ground. So you want to have this look of kind of so people don't don't realize you your your Scotty has been groomed. They people who don't know what Scotties look like when they're not groomed have no idea. They think this dog just grows this way. A lot of uh, non-Scotty owners also think the head just grows that way. No, no, no. Okay, we're moving on to Westy Head. This is a Scotty. This is Nessa. <laughs> this is the way she looked when she came in to rescue. She is adorable, but she doesn't look like a Scotty, right? She looks like a Westie. What this is, is a round head, right? A pie pan face. It's out at the sides. It's high on the top. It's short at the chin. This is exactly the opposite of what we're, we're going to want. What it should be is more like a rectangle longer this way and this should go out and shorter part of the rectangle here. Um, it's oriented vertically long, longer um, top to bottom. If you want your Scotty to look like a Westie, round face is the way to go. This is how I worked with, this was the first time I've ever had to work with a, a Westie hat. Some of it was done in rescue before I got her, but whoa, there still was a lot to do. This is a Westie, see, that's how they look. This is Nessa, she looks like a Westie. And I excuse this, uh, this white out, but this is, I, I thought maybe I can make it look like a, without doing it, actually doing it for the presentation. And yeah, you can. Already you can see she looks more like a Scotty. This is what she looked like after she was groomed by the wonderful Cindy Fredericks at St. Louis, who does the grooming, much of the grooming for St. Louis Scottish Terrier Rescue. She this was after her first grooming in rescue and she already looks a whole lot like a Scotty. This was probably a couple of months or, or maybe right after I sort of, after I got to know her, I worked on her a little bit more for the look that I like, but you can still see her little beard is tiny. It's, you know, it's gonna take a while for this to grow out. Here she is several months later. And this is what you see in a Westie from the side. 
And this is like probably close to a year later where her beard is growing out and you can see what the face should look like. All of this stuff needs to be removed. And on a Westie, the, you're encouraging the hair to move out like this. On a Scotty, you want it to move this direction for the beard. So here is the Westie head fix. Um, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time to fix. Um, some of it is just gonna have to be a matter of time. Work in stages to avoid stressing your Scott because you're working on the head and this is a sensitive area. Um, the equipment you need are the thinning shears and um, depending on, on your Scotty, the straight scissors are probably for the sides of, of the head. You'll need some work with the straight shears. Um, you wanna clean out the excess hair that is sticking up between the ears, this part here. And you're gonna to wanna to clean out a little bit this, um, the top of the head too. And again, to not to make a line that you can see, even with the thinning shears, you wanna work holding the shears in the direction of the hair growth. So you may wanna come from behind the head and use the shears like this coming forward and how Nessa is oriented there. When you go down the sides of the head, you're gonna to wanna to change the direction because the hair is growing in a different direction. So you have to keep moving so that you're going parallel to the way the hair is growing. Um, take out the excess hair on the sides of the face there are moles, probably all of you know this, on all Scotties. They're placed about, let me see, I'm trying to think. They're placed about here and here. And you can nip them with a scissor. So be careful about that. But they also can be used as a guide for how you wanna clean out um, as you're going from the side of the eye down the side of the face to where the beard starts just stretching out a little bit. Um, you use the straight scissors. Um, using the straight scissors, you can angle the side of the beard short by the cheeks and longer towards the chin. You want um, kind of a, a slant line. And again, this is kind of a per personal preference. How close do you get to the corners of the eyes? I like to be very close to the corners of the eyes. And you can start out with the straight scissors going um, 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 down the side of the face. And I usually go from the bottom up um, and make, because you want a line there, you're going to have this more perpendicular to the way the hair is growing. So you're making a line going up the side of the face this. But I start usually start out with the straight shears and then go to the, um, the thinning shears to make the line not look quite so harsh. Sometimes I like a nice crisp line there. And for as for the length of the beard down here, time, fellas, that's all you got is time. You're going to have to wait for it to grow out. Hobbit feet. <laughs> I mean hobbit feet in the sense of weird looking with hair unevenly cut, not these actual things. On a Scotty, hobbit feet can cause mats to form between the paw pads and it can cause dirt to be captured and moisture to be held because the hair drags on the ground. And moisture on the paws or between the pads can cause you know, yeast infections and things like that. So you do want to keep the feet clean. Um, and they make your Scotty look untidy. They just look messy, messier. Well, you know, after you groom them and brush them out, they look great for about five minutes and then they look kind of roughed up, but that's the nature of a Scotty. But they don't have to be roughed up and have weird looking feet. So you want, keeping the feet neat is one way to extend the time between grooming. 
your Scotty can look neater and look like it's more like it's been groomed um, more recently. Foot fix, um, straight shears or small scissors, ear scissors, and the thinning shears to finish it off. Now you're gonna have problems probably with the feet because these are a prized part of the Scotty body. The basic attitude is do not touch my paws. Um, so you need to work very, very slowly and patiently. Paws come in two sizes. These, these are the uh, front ones which are big and plump and the, they're smaller in the back. Um, if you haven't ever noticed that, it's time to look at those paws. So you're going to use the shears uh, and the scissors to remove hair that sticks out around the outer edge of the paw. And you're going perpendicular to the way it's, you're drawing a line here. So you wanna draw it perpendicularly around the paw. You're gonna go around the paw like this. <clears throat> and then between the pads, you need to get the, um, the growth out between the pads. Um, you can either do this while the Scotty is standing, or if you're lucky, there are a few Scotties who will let you do it lying on their back. Um, it is optional, but I like to use the peanut clipper to work around the pads. It can take um, things you'd think you would it damage these, but the um, damage the pads, but the peanut clipper has very tiny teeth on it. And um, so the chance of nipping them with it is pretty, pretty small. And you can also clean out behind the big pad and check for, um, for mats because they form there. And use the thinning shears held perpendicular to the floor to get a nice taper on the furnishings as they go towards the, the paw. You don't wanna have a line on that, so you're going holding the shear, the thinning shears this direction to nip around and make sure that you don't have anything sticking out the side of the feet. Tail of tails, flag and rat, that's Nessa's flag tail when she came in. According to the AKC breed standard for the Scottish Terrier, the tail should be thick at the base and tapering gradually to a point. This means no flag at the end, and not shave down close to the skin. Tail fix. Um, the equipment you're gonna need is uh, our thinning shears and use the straight shears first if there is excessive length. Um, the Andes de shedding tool, which is the optional one, if your Scotty will allow it. Not all Scotties will allow this on their tail. Um, you're going for an upside down carrot look, fat carrot. You don't want a skinny carrot. A uh, tail should be thicker at the base and um, gradually tapering up toward the tip. You need to hold the tail gently to feel its edges as you trim, but don't squeeze the tail. Again, if you're concentrating, there's a tendency to squeeze. Um, you start at the tip to avoid being forced into a really thin tip and very pointed one, uh, pointed tip. If you start down here too close, you're going to end up too close on, on this side up here and you're gonna have a really thin tail at, at the top. So you wanna set how thick you want it up here. And you do want a little heft to it at the top. Um, and not too pointy at the top. Uh, you're working down, and again, you're setting a line here. So you're going to hold the scissors parallel to the tail edge as you're going down. Um, most of the time, I, I nest this tail, as you can see, grows like crazy. So I have to uh, groom her tail a lot between actual sessions. And so as you're going down the tail, you're holding the the thing, the scissors, this, you know, I'm, I'm holding it up. So you're still holding it this way. You're not holding it this way. You're making a line. So you want to see this. And you can repeat. You'll find working with the, um, the thinning shears, you can hold them in one place and take off more or straighten the line without resorting to the straight shears. 
um, to get a neater line. Um, there's no need to trim the top part of the tail. So if you had a dog here, this is the part you're going to trim. You don't have to trim the usually the upper part unless there's stuff sticking out. Um, you can maybe use the yeah, and just the shedding tool to take stuff off the top and to kind of um, harden the tail's coat um, by pulling some of the hair out and maybe getting a little less fat in certain places. But be careful. If you do too much on the top of the tail, you're going to get dense. Ask me how I know. Um, avoid using a clipper on the tail. I know some people do, and they like the tail looking like that. But it's too hard not to strip to a thin, minimally tapering rat type tail. And again, some people like that look. Dumbo ears, we're not talking really looking like this. But it's not about the shape, it's about the horizontal span of the ears. Um, what is wrong is that the ear direction, because you're letting hair grow out, if you remember the first picture of Hannah, it, it's going out to the side. What it should be, the ear or orientation and direction should be up. So um, you need to know the ears are very sensitive. There are a lot of nerves in them and especially at the edges. So you need to be very careful when you're working with the ear. Here is little Hannah when I first was grooming her. <laughs> and I think maybe the Russian left this too. <laughs> um, she's cute as a button, but these are Dumbo ears. And so what you're going to do is um, you need the straight scissors, the ear scissors, and the, maybe the thinning shears too, depending on what you're, if, if you're working with the back of the ear, um, you might want to just use the thinning shears there. So you're creating a line. So again, you're going um, straight down with the scissors and the, you can start out with these scissors if you can control them, or you might want to go for the smaller um, um, scissors. You have to all constantly hold the ear gently. Scotties don't like their ears held, but you can talk soothingly to them and they will sometimes cooperate. You, but you need to keep, I had a dental hygienist who used to, without warning really, they had, she would examine underneath our tongues. My husband, and I always talked about this and she'd like make a sling with a piece of gauze and pull the tongue up. <laughs> now there are, you know, a tongue is pretty sensitive too. It was annoying as hell. I can imagine how it must feel to have somebody holding on to your ear for a long time. So be very careful, hold the ear gently and you need to keep the edge between your fingers as you're actually working with the scissors. Work from the tip down and remove the hair that goes beyond the edge of the ear and try to make a line. So again, you're going perpendicular, you're holding the scissors this direction and you're trying to make a line here. Um, it is very easy to snip into an edge. So you have to have that. The only way you can know where the edge is, is if you can feel it and you can hold it so that you're not, if you snip the edge, you'd be snipping your own fingers. And the, there is also a double skin flap that is right about here. There's a little place where the Scotty has two layers of skin and you're gonna need to clean out each part of that flap separately. And that's an easy place to make a mistake and nip the ears. So with the thinning shears, you need to clean out the inner ear. If there's a lot of, some Scotties have a lot of hair inside the, the inner ear. And um, again, you're going with the shears, you, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to go different directions. You're gonna have to take some out and go straight in. You're gonna have to come down like this so that you're not um, making um, a, too much of a line. And the only thing you leave in the inner ear supposedly is a little tuft right here. And it should look like a second ear sort of 
like this shape. Um, and this is ear tufts we could talk about for hours, but I'm not going there. Um, you need to also take, if there's excess hair off the back of the ear, coming off the back of the ear, um, holding the sh shears, the thinning shears parallel to the direction of the hair growth, you take off some of that too, so that when you look at the Scotty from the side, there's not stuff hanging out the back. And there is a disguise for if you have a Scotty with really long ears and you want to disguise it, you can leave more hair at the base right here um, across so that the ear just looks shorter. Tidying your Scotty is a way to stretch time between grooming and save you money. So what we've done already is ears, feet, tail, and we'll talk uh, minimally about eyebrows and practically not at all about a jacket or sanitary spots. This is important and it will require your Scotty having a lot of trust in you. The anal area, they're not so stent, but genital areas, mm, that can be, but you wanna remove excess hair from those areas for sanitary reasons. So um, once you've, worked with your Scotty, you can start considering doing the sanitary um, areas. A few words about eyebrows. There is a lot of highly individualized preference in this area and different styles, European style and so forth. All proper styles have these things in common. The Scotty can actually see, not like this poor thing. The Scotty's eyes can be seen, not like this poor thing. Uh, the brows are wedge shaped, not a bold cut. You know, my mother used to do that to my bangs, just, oh, let's just, you know, make them straight across. Um, and once I was uh, helping in a grooming seminar for the Chicago club, I was, when we broke out into um, um, individuals trying to do it themselves, I had a, a couple who, he insisted on cutting his Scott, his Scott, their Scotty's eyebrows straight across, so that what you had is the exact opposite of what you need. You had it, you have it um, long in front and straight across here, so that it's sticking out to the sides. You want um, brows that are wedge shaped, no matter what style you choose, not bowl cut, and you follow the reverse bonsai rule: nothing sticks out of the sides. Eyebrow fix. The equipment you need are straight scissors, ear scissors, thinning shears. Um, you have in front of you a picture of a Scotty whose brows you like so that you can figure out how to um, emulate that. Clean out between the eyebrows with the thinning shears and the inner corners of the eyes uh, with the ear scissors. Um, work parallel with the line of the hair and it's growing in this direction now, um, not perpendicular, not this direction. You don't want a line here. You want it to look natural. And obviously don't poke the eyes. You cut the brows, this guy doesn't have them, but in a wedge shape. You want it short here and longer here. So you want a kind of wedge. And you don't, you don't want it to go too far over the eyes so the Scotty can see. And what you, you can do with to get a wedge is you hold the shears against the side of the head. Can you see this? Like this. And you aim um, towards the nose. That, um, and you're going to make your first cuts like this, sort of down. And, but you're gonna to have to decide how far you want it to go out. So um, again, consult your picture for that. And uh, you're resting the scissors initially against the side of the head and angling towards the nose. You finish with the thinning shears for a less harsh line if that's what you like. And again, I, sometimes I like a real crisp line there. And you clean out the cheek area and the top of the head with the thinning shears and work parallel to the growth of the hair. And watch out for those moles, you can nip them and you're, you've got one. 
Eyebrows are something that really can express your Scotty's personality. This is Hemingway. I always used a kind of short brow for him because he has this nice long neck and sometimes they went, would take it out longer. This is Toby and he has pretty short one. I, I go back and forth between what I like. I love this picture. This is not one of my Scotties, but I love the fact that this Scotty who has sweet brows is looking at Fala at the monument and Fala has the bowl cut here. And this is Maddie. And this was more of a European cut. It's hard to see, but along in front. How to talk to your groomer. First of all, find out if your groomer has been having trouble getting your Scotty to cooperate. You need to know that in any case. Um, and I would hope that the groomer would tell you. Start with a spoonful of sugar. Praise what you like. Don't just go in with complaints. Say, I really like the way you did this and this and this. Then you ask for adjustment of one or two things, not the whole list, if you've got a whole list. Bring in a picture from online that illustrates what you'd like to see and um, make some changes yourself on your Scotty using what we've talked about here to show what you'd like done or, and say something, I would say something like, you could probably do this better, but this is what I tried to go for. And know what's possible and what's not. It's like, you know, someone going into the hairdresser and say, make me look like, you know, Kim Kardashian or something. So there are resources out there. There are lots of YouTube how to Scotty groom videos. All you do have to do is Google YouTube Scottish Terrier grooming and a ton of them will come up. Some of them will be more towards pets. Most of them or many of them are for um, show ring um, Scotties. Regional clubs are great assets. You can go to their grooming seminars and you can in person meet breeders and companion Scotty groomers who, with whom you can talk about equipment and where to get it. Uh, shows um, are a great place. There are always vendors at shows that have, have grooming equipment and you can look at it and talk with the vendor about it. I bought a lot of my equipment um, initially at shows. Uh, photos on social media will help you look at styles of what you see and try to um, go figure out what you like. This is the ultimate guide, the S S Scottish Terrier Club of, of America, their guide to grooming the Scottish Terrier. There's more in this than you can possibly imagine. Okay, we're running a little late, but I'd still like to have this question and answer session if people are um, willing and Michelle, do you wanna um, take over here now? Do we have, um, uh, please remain muted though until you're asked un to unmute and we'll ask under certain circumstances if uh, we need explanation. Um, enter your questions in the chat panel and as many questions as possible will be answered probably running late so people may have left let me see if i can see who's here actually okay. Lori, we're still strong with uh 16 attend 16 17 attendees oh um, okay great no one has actually entered in any questions right now um okay but, man what a fabulous presentation you just are okay. awesome Does anybody have any questions or comments or uh, need clarification for anything? I guess not. Is there anyone here for their very first time on, on one of our Zoomies? Raise your hand. Oh, here we go. Here's a question um, from Mary Bauer. Um, you mentioned moles. What are they? Um, the moles are, they're actually moles. <laughs> uh, they're bumps on the side of the Scotty head. And they, um, let me get a dog here. 
they're right beside there's some one right beside the eye up here and then down further there's one oops i don't have yeah, it there the um there's one right beside the eye on each side obviously and then down here about on the side if you feel your scotty just feel the side of the face and just touching your scotty um the side of their head you will feel these moles and the reason i mention them is because they are a good guide for grooming the beard because they they go like this the line is between them is is like this and so it will help you determine the line of the beard you want the beard to go on that not above it and not below that line but they also are a little bit of a danger point because they usually have one really hard wiry um, hair <laughs> hanging out of it. And your scissors or your shears will resist that. And it, it's, um, the mole sticks out more right where the hair is coming out and so you can nip the very tip top of the mole um it's something peculiar to scotty's i don't know if other dogs have it or not um because i i don't think i i don't think so but it's it may be on other dogs i think the thing is is that that's a sensory thing that if you hit that they also will react and so I think there's a lot of sensation and it may warn, be a warning device. Does anybody know whether this is true or am I just pulling this out of my fern? Um, that it's a, it's a way of determining something's too close to the side of your face. Right. Um, so it can cause a reaction on the dog's part. Um, I see that Catherine Cages is here. Hi, Kat. Um, so that's it, it really is a very very nice thing for um a guide but there's something something you need to be aware of lori could you address if you happen to make a little oops and nip something and there's bleeding I'll there are somebody yeah the the ear will bleed a lot and um it's like getting a cut on your own face. You're gonna bleed, you see some bleeding. You can use styptic, but there's also, um, I can't remember the name of it. There's also something um, in Chinese herbal medicine that doesn't sting quite as much, or you can just simply put a little pressure on the area. Um, the Scotties, if you talk soothingly to them, every one of them, and I've, like I said, I once poked Hemingway in the eye, not with a scissors. I was doing something. I can't even remember what it was. I was doing something with him and something I was working with. I think it was a, I was trying to get a lid off of something to put in and I accidentally poked him in the eye. Oh, I felt just awful. Um, he, jerked back like that and I just talked him down uh, you know apologizing to him telling him I'm so sorry but a little bit of pressure a little bit of styptic um it will will stop the bleeding um but it you know it usually I've um, I'm a real weenie about doing nails but I I do do them on necessary because she's more cooperative. Jim holds her, I, holds her. I don't think I'd be able to do it by myself, but I have gone to the quick with that. And I use styptic or the Chinese herbal thing. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the name for it. It is also a powder and I think it comes in a liquid form. Um, so um, using that or, and I take for the nail, I take and put pressure on the end of it. Um, and again, getting getting yourself in the right place about it, being soothing. Um, all mothers of human children know how to talk down a crying child. Um, use that, pull that out of yourself, whether you're male or female, you can do it. Um, and they, I have never, I've not done it 
often enough to know, can you ruin it forever? But it never has for, for my Scots because, and, and you can also give them treats. You, you will, it's very strange, but yeah, okay. So they'll forgive you if you throw a bunch of treats at them. <laughs> <laughs> Nan, Nan mentioned um, also that a uh, damp black tea bag will help oh, as well, which is that's excellent. right. I've heard that. I've heard that. Oh, and here's Cindy. Oh, Cindy says shares very educational presentation, Lori. It's amazing what you can do with thinners and scissors, especially on the head. I'm not sure that I'm brave enough to try it. Though. <laughs> you know, I've had. Uh, I've had so many rescues that I didn't know anything about when they came in to rescue and needed to be groomed. And you've, you've been in this situation yourself with grooming all the rescues you do that some of them, it just going straight for a clipper was not an option. And in fact, with Emma, um, who wasn't really a rescue. She, her first owner died and um, the family rehomed her. But she was um, she was peculiar in that she would not let me, she would let me use the clipper as long as I did not stand in front of her. So I had to groom her head from the back um, and run around the front and look to see if it looked okay. <laughs> But um, some of them react, as you know, react very badly to the clipper initially, and you don't ever want to go into a situation where you're forcing something on the dog, because that is just, you're, you're ruining the whole experience um, for a long time, if not forever. Um, there is no reason to force a dog to be groomed. This is an optional thing anyhow. Um, this is a, you know, more for the, the humans than it is for the dogs. Although most of my dogs, um, I've noticed that they kind of feel, and maybe it's, they're probably reading it off of me. I like the way they look. They kind of prance around. They think they're looking special. Um, but there have been dogs that for up to a year, I've had to use this technique um, instead of going for the clipper. And especially with the head, which is, as you know, Cindy, they, they really don't like their head being messed with. And I can't say I blame them. I wouldn't, I don't, as you can probably tell, I don't go to the hairdresser because I can't stand to have them touching me around the head. And there are varying levels of sensitivity in dogs and humans. Some are very easily overwhelmed by sensory uh, input. So you have to be careful about that too. But I don't know, I think it, you know, you're not going to get as clean lines, but you can get a Scotty who looks a whole lot like a, more like a Scotty if you do this. And especially if you're starting with a uh, professional grooming um, initially, you can keep it clean -er, um, and go to the groomer less often if you clean up these main areas. Where do I go? Just talk. Hey, Lori, it's Arnell. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Arnell. <laughs> I was gonna say is, it, it, this was amazing. It was wonderful. And though I don't have a Scotty, I have a wiggle worm Yorkie. I just wanna tell everyone out there, you can do it. Lori helped me immensely, just kind of giving me the courage to do it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you'll make little things, but who cares? They turn their head. They won't know they're, they don't know they're lopsided sometimes on one side <laughs> you on the other. But I wanted to say, I think any dog doesn't like their feet touched, but I use those blunt nose or you call them the eye scissors with the little blunt tip on the, yeah, pad, the ear scissors on the pads because they don't snip the pad when you're going in between it. And I found yeah. that using a spritz bottle with a little bit of water, just a real tiny one, will get the hair enough wet underneath there that I can pull the some of that hair forward a little bit and then cut right along that line. And I'm not digging into the pad as much. So just- Yeah, get, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it makes it straighter. I just usually pull the hair a little bit, but sometimes that 
it's tickly for them to exactly. have that done. But this, they, if they don't mind, and some Scotties do mind having their paws wet, but if they don't mind, that's a good tip. And I don't um, use and, a big spritz bottle because they don't, you don't want them to be frightened. So I just use that yeah. tiny one. I just share it. You could save it from your flower, five flower essence bottle. Yeah. And <laughs> perfect size to spritz on there and just kind of dampen it to be able to help you handle that hair on the pads. Yeah, that's a good, I, that's a, that's a good choice. And about being, I see Cindy's got another co comment and I'll answer that in a sec. Um, about being, um, being courageous enough to do it. When computers, and I'm old enough to know this, when computers first came about, they had, um, I had, you know, I was intimidated. I didn't know. And they have all of this language about, you know, failure and destruction and so forth of, you know, that made it sound scary. Like you could really, really um, destroy your computer if you did the wrong thing. And there was a book that addressed that fear that basically said, no, you know, there's only, you really have to do, you know, something really stupid. So it made me bolder to try out whatever, you know, look around on a program and see what is it. I mean, I learned to do PowerPoint, as you may be able to tell, by just diving in and trying it and pushing a button and seeing. And, you know, it's, the Russian was, was correct. It will grow back. You know, it's not the end of the world. And as long as you don't have your ego invested in how your dog looks, I mean, we all do to some extent. We wouldn't have a certain breed if we didn't want like a certain look and a certain personality. But, you know, for the most part, John Q. Public doesn't know how a Scotty's supposed to look. They think it's a Westie or they think it's a, you know, Schnauzer or something else. So it's not like you're going to be laughed off the block. Um, if you make a little mistake, just go in there and give it a try. And if you're trying, just start small. This is what I like about this idea of, you know, working with a groomer and trying to just clean up some stuff. Um, it makes you bolder because you've already got a template. The Scotties are already, you know, pretty much okay looking and you just keep following that line. That's another tip that is, don't let your Scotty grow way out like I sometimes do, because then you got to carve a whole new dog. It's really difficult to do, um, more difficult to do that way. Um, Cindy mentions um, that I don't mention holding the beard to steady the head. Normally, I you mentioned I a cradling it, the head under the jaw. Normally, that's my approach, and I use my outer fingers to kind of every once in a while touch so it's a, it depends on the scotty some of them don't really don't really mind the beard being held i have a tendency to tense up so anything i can do i usually have my hand kind of open and um just cradle the beard but again you're going to have to be in a position where you already have some cooperation from the scotty and they will give you cooperation if you work with them respectfully um, and don't force them to do things they don't want to do. Um, it's just, a, it's a sad thing to do to a Scotty. So I do, it depends on the Scotty. I sometimes will more grab the beard, but I have a tendency to squeeze the muzzle when I do that. So to keep myself from doing that more often, I just have an open hand and use my fingers, if they start to, you know, pull one way or another, just and say, ah, you know, and when you're doing the interruptive thing, make sure you're not using a loud voice. That's so aversive. Um, just make sure that you're you're keeping your voice inside voice, soft voice. Ah, ah, oops, you know, um, Suzanne Clothier when she's correcting a dog, oftentimes says, oops, oh too bad, you know, kind of thing. Um, so I have to, um, I don't know if I've mentioned 
with, uh, with Nessa, I have to be very careful about how many treats I give her. Hemingway, I could throw treat after treat after treat, and it made him more cooperative. If I did that with Nessa, she would get so excited about the treats that she'd be squirmy and, and stand there staring at the treats on the table, you know. Um, I usually groom in my dining room with the the grooming table away from the dining room table, but near enough so that I can reach the treats. And she'd stand there and just stare down the treats and constantly orienting herself to the treats. So I had to just very, very infrequently and after she was particularly cooperative at a touchy point, I would um, give her a small treat and in a very not not talk it up very much because that also would crank her up um and she's very easy as I still have that video Cindy of you grooming her the first time and she was on her standing up with her paws on your shoulders and giving you kisses and you were saying no sweetheart we still have to do this we do have to do this <laughs> so it depends on your Scotty how much you you um, even when you're praising them, how exuberant you are, because some of them, it's just, it's too much. I'm thinking of changing vets because when I take Nessa, they're very nice people and I've had no complaints about them. But when I take them there, everybody in the place wants to see her and everybody cranks her up. When we get out of there, she's wound like a cheap clock. And I don't think that's a good place to be. It's too exciting for her. She passes out dead asleep from a tiny little vet appointment because every tech in the whole place, you know, talks to her like, oh, you know, it's way too much for her, way too much for her. So you have to tailor that to each dog and you really, really, really can control a lot by the way you communicate with your dog verbally and just with sound, but don't groom angry. <laughs> well, it looks like we might be done. You think so, Michelle? Whoops. I just wanted to mention that um, Angela um, mentioned that in her tricks class, she was taught to cradle the Scotty, the Scotty's beard by using treats. And that has worked well. Um, yeah. But again, going to your point about you have to be careful, modulate the, the amount of treats, et cetera. Um, so we are at, at our time limit here, Lori. And I, again, I want to thank you. It was a fabulous um, Zoomy. As always, you are just the best, best teacher. Um, can you give us just take a, a like 30 seconds and give us a heads up of what might be coming up next year for our Zoomies? Okay, for sure, we've got Erica Journey um, in January um, doing a presentation on um, Cushing's disease. And Erica gave uh, uh, this presentation several years ago to her um, regional club and we heard great things about it. So she's updating it and she's going to be um, doing that. We're in touch with an animal communicator and we're going to see her next week or the week after while I'm, we're both, I'm coming, going up to Bailey's Harbor. We're working, Nan and I and uh, Michelle and Arnell will be working on um, the uh, next auction uh, that we have. So we will all be th there together. And we're going to meet with this animal communicator who will talk about how to, how you can, I, we, we're hoping how you can um, read your own animals. Um, we have, let's see, what else? Can you help me out here? I'm blanking yep. on anything um, else. Da Hopefully Marsha Dawson's going to be doing a presentation. That's for right. So yes. That'll yes. be probably be a so. little bit later in the year. So yeah. And it might be on liver enzymes or also some stuff on, were we talking about Cushing's or, or bladder cancer? I can't remember. what. Um, Marcia... I think a little bit more on liver enzymes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've got a lot of stuff coming up um, and we, uh, this is part of our mission as the 
as a rally um, is to educate um, owners of and the general public of, about Scotties. And we wanna make this fun, as fun as we can in addition to um, us all learning something. So. I just wanna close with um, again, thanking everyone for your attendance. If you have not participated um, in submitting a sample of your dog's blood for the STCA Health Trust Fund DNA project, and you either want more information about that or you'd like a kit sent to you, please message me directly and I can, I can get that in the mail to you. Um, it is an extremely valuable project that we are undertaking. We're the first parent club to do this for any breed. Um, and the whole purpose is to collect DNA from all of our Scotties, not regardless of what their pedigree is or we don't know what their pedigree is so that those blood samples can be kept for a long, long time beyond any of our lifetimes um, so that they can be tapped into for participating in research studies. Those of you who may have attended the rally who contributed to donating samples to um, the NIH for the um, bladder cancer gene identification study, or you've, I, or you've worked with Purdue to donate blood or any other research project, once those samples are given, they're lost forever. Um, and so we wanna really get in samples so that they can be banked in a gene bank in Utah and preserved forever. And your participation in, the, in this project will only cost you first-class postage to send the sample off and whatever your vet charges you for a blood draw. So please, please think about that. My heart breaks every week when I see all the dogs that are posted that have crossed the Rainbow Bridge and we don't have their DNA. So please really think about that. Thank you again, Lori. Thank you to all of you. And uh, we look forward to reconnecting with you at our next event. Thanks to everyone for attending. And if you want, want to contact me about anything that my email address is there, don't be shy.